Am I audible? Hello. Ah, yes, sir. Audible, sir. Please continue. Yeah. Sir, you are in mood, sir. Mute, sir. Dr. Akbar Shah in mute. My slides are... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so I have... Uh, uh, great pleasure in, in, in uh, welcoming Dr. Mohan uh, to present his talk on multi organ or chip for biological evaluation. Dr. Mohan is a very senior scientist, very effective and efficacious, and uh, he's uh, taken over uh, the, the latest trend in the uh, uh, in vitro technology, uh, particularly applicable in the alternative scenario. Though he had been doing a lot of other uh, domains of alternatives, otherwise, uh, Dr. Mohanan is uh, is one of the executive committee members of the Society for Alternatives to Animal Experiments, and uh, he's basically uh, he conducted a lot of research uh, on, on alternatives and in vitro toxic technologies. Um, uh, I welcome Dr. Mohanan to make his presentation. Uh, multi organ on a chip for biological evaluation presentation shall be for 30 minutes. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Akbar Shah. Uh, my slides are visible, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, thank you so much uh, for giving an opportunity to present my work here uh, on the multi organ on a chip for biological evaluations. And uh, just uh, I would like to uh, project about uh, uh, my organization. So I'm from uh, uh, Sri Chitra Institute for Medical Science and Technology, which is coming under the Department of Science and Technology Government of India. We have three wings. One is the uh, tertiary care hospital for uh, cardiac and neuro specialties. And then we have a biomedical technology wing where the medical devices and all are uh, developing. And we have uh, from prototyping to the clinical trials facilities and the, the actual manual center for health science studies. And uh, the biomedical technology being the objective is the promotion of biomedical engineering and technology. The main operations are medical device development, then medical device evaluation, applied research activities and human resource, um, uh, resource development. And you know that uh, we developed uh, uh, several devices and I have shown here very few and around 15 are there and uh, which is the technology is transferred uh, uh, to the Indian companies uh, from starting from the north to south and to the west, east. Okay. And these are some of the things are the blood bag, uh, the blood bag which is available in Indian markets is uh, developed by us only and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, what is that? It is uh, marketing in 75 countries as of now. We have oxygenated. That's also in the clinical uh, in the in the in the market. The heart ward, which is which carries more than uh, 1.2 lakhs people, and uh, all others are in the in the in the in, in, in related to the patients. And uh, you know that uh, we have uh, around uh, the patent granted uh, in Indian side is around 125. And patent granted is sealed from uh, the outside India is around 19. And the, pat the file uh, patent applications from, uh, in India is around 129. And the file patent application in uh, outside India is around 11. And we have around registration, that is a design registration around 46 and trademark age. And uh, the patent to commercialization ratio has, uh, is, uh, is more than 30%. So whatever we developed, uh, our aim is to, to go to the 
patient. That is our ultimate. So whatever we develop is around 30% is in the market now, uh, means in the patients. And you know that uh, the our institute, uh, specifically I'm telling about um, the biomedical technology and where we have uh, uh, for the medical device development, which includes the material qualification, then biocompatibility, and also the physical chemical characterization of the materials. Uh, materials. And with respect to product evaluation, we have bridge tests, then simulations, then in silico studies and accelerated aging. Then we have the large animal studies, uh, which includes uh, the efficacy studies and uh, the safety studies. Okay. And then the product release, the sterility, pyrogenicity, and residual analysis. These are the main. And our institute is accredited by COFRAC France. Uh, the only one institute accredited by COFRAC France is and we are we got certification in 2003 and 18 years uh, we completed this uh, certification yesterday and day before yesterday was our the last surveillance inspection by the France team and with respect to my subject uh, means uh, I'm going to present here is the multi organ on a chip for biological evaluation so uh, today I read about uh, a review on this uh, and which is recently published, that is uh, on March, it was published in the, the August 2021. So, which is very clearly mentioned about the multi organ on a chip, and which is a systemic approach to model and decipher the inter organ communication. I'm just to focus in this here with a few of the slides, the background about uh, the work and all. And then I can tell you about uh, my work and what is our status or what is our contribution to. The Indian community, and we are not against using animals. Our, is, um, our main aim is to to reduce the animal usage. So you can see the uh, the multi organ on a chip is basically a microfluidic devices. So what is microfluidic device? Uh, you know that it's a miniaturized device made up of a variety of substances from poly dimethyl siloxin to hydrogels you can make up with any of these things and you know that when you do with the dev this device you need the micro liter of volume of the reagents or a drug to circulate into these devices and each device is having a different organ it's representative organ i will explain later and it's highly specific as this and it's precise control over the flow we have a flow control, uh, that is microfluidic flow control uh, is there, so we can regulate uh, the flow in, in, in par with our blood circulation. And uh, then it's a cross-section geometry is, is 10 to 1000 micrometer. The diameter is, is, uh, is equivalent to our hair, okay, the diameter. Then low Reynolds number, that is the high viscous force, and it can deliver nutrients and chemical gradients in a controlled manner. Suppose if you want to, uh, to treat with all the organs also, or if you want to focus on a particular organ also, we can do with a controlled thing. And it's prominent platform to explore cellular response. And you can see here, it has a vacuum chamber and uh, there is an inflow and outflow and with a porous membrane and all, I will explain the subsequent slides. And what organs is, it's a general thing. So we can get it from anywhere. What is organ in our body? So organ consists of two or more tissues with unique functions. And it has a blood perfusion through endothelium lined blood vessels. And it's regulated by mechanical force and blood flow. It's controlled by chemical gradients and molecular factors and physiologically linked with the other organs via blood circulation, immune cell infiltration and during this. And here you can see the microfluidics also having a systemic, a systemic pathway. So same way, this we incorporate it into a micro device like the organ on a chip or multi organ on a chip or human on a chip. The main function is to simulate these functions in an alternative way. I just to go to the organ on a chip, everybody knows it last uh, several years this was in the, in the talk with the everybody and you know that uh, this is a very good uh, what is that in the, in the in the new generation you can very well apply the advanced version of uh, this organ on a chip 
to evaluate the biological response or the disease modeling in, in a different aspects. You know that uh, it is the organ on a chip is a microfluidic chip containing cells uh, which recapitulate the organ levels functions for drug screening, toxicity, and therapeutic applications. And this system can enable the specific tissue environment with a precise mechanical, fluidic, and structural control, which has in some of the uh, things around 5 mm size width and around 2.5 mm the depth, the cells, the, 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 the device uh, or the, the, the um, what is that, uh, 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 the well is such a, a small thing. That is 5 mm uh, uh, the depth and 2.5 mm the length. And it can accelerate the drug development by controlling the fluid path by microfluidics. And it can produce more reliable results than the animal models because the animal is having animal cells and with a systemic response. But here it has the human cells with a systemic response. So the more reliability you will get it from here. The term organ on a chip was invented by Donald Ingler, and uh, which is uh, who is the founding director of the Weiss Institute of Biologically Inspired Engineering. So what is systemic? So I want to uh, explain. It's an interaction between multiple organs are essential to ensure the proper physiological functioning of the human body. Although organs are physically separated in vivo and their communication is mediated via the blood and limb circulation by various signals to maintain the overall viability and human states. Like this, here also we have the connection with the fluid control, okay, with the microfluidic techniques. See, here we can see the, the models available with the organ on a chip. In different models you can, or the different model is available for different type of application. And you can get uh, the, the blood brain barrier permeability, you can do that. The neurotoxicity, then toxicity of uh, inhaled compounds, the cardiotoxicity, neurotoxicity, sorry, and the cancer pro drug activation, the metastasis, toxicity of any, there's several things. The important thing, what I am looking is the ADME and T, that is absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and toxicity. This is very important as far as a toxicologist is concerned with respect to the preclinical evaluation. So you can make any of the organ, okay? In a single organ or with the multiple organs, you can do it. And in a series, you can join together to, to keep a multi-organ or in a single organ also, you can create and do the toxicity specifically. The next is multi-organ on a chip. A multi-organ on a chip device is a biomimetic system built on a microfluidic chip in which the cross-organ communication is established by allowing the study of a multi-organ process and modeling of the systemic response. It is nothing but in a model or in a, in a device, in a, in, a, in, a, in a system, you can keep one or two devices or more than one devices or four devices. So five devices you can. You can keep it. So that is a multi-organ. You can keep. You can do a single organ in a chip as well as the multi-organ on a chip. And even uh, now, people are working on ten organ on a chip, and it's named as the, the uh, human on a chip. And the modeling of inter-organ biochemical crossing, uh, crossing and ADME profiling of drugs and of cellular trafficking across the multiple organs. So this is nothing but. Uh, you can, you will get multiple organs to do for a biological evaluation. So you can see here, two major approaches are being pursued to realize the multi-organ platforms. See, here you can see, you can individually make organs, okay? And then you can join with the, or coupled with the, the capillary connection. Then you can keep it as a multi-organ. Or otherwise, in a single platform, you can keep multiple organs and do your evaluation which is connected to the microfluidic system. So two, the main ways are, one is the individual, the organ on a chip, and this organ on a chip individually you can make it and connect it or coupled with capillary connections and to make it as a 
multi organs or you can keep it in a, in a single platform you can keep multiple organs or multiple wells you can uh, do it's as a multiple organs and if you can keep in the multi or more than um, four or five and there is an the reason or the the latest uh, the 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 trend is the human on a chip it's uh, uh, more than or eight or nine or ten organs here you can see the multi organ on a chip is the perfusion is based on one is the direct the other is the circulation you can see here this is multi organs and which is connected with capillaries and then you know that this is the toxicant and it is a uh, the fluid uh, the, the controlling area and which each and every organ and then goes to it's a one way okay it is one way you are exposing your compound to the organs organ on a chip and it is coming here okay and this is again with the, the single organ and multiple organ on a, in a single plate you can do in a similar way it is only one way only okay and uh, then you can do recirculation for our system you need a systemic response so here you can see this is an inlet and outlet it circulate like anything okay and here it is a fluid controlling system where you can adjust the the flow rate in par with the, our human blood flow okay and here you can see the uh, the, the the multi organ on a chip and with the circulation and then the uh, you can very well do the toxicity with respect to uh, with respect to the, the multi organs you can do with uh, uh, the the adme studies or a disease modeling okay and these are some of the multi organ on a chip devices available which are already people uh, the scientists uh, globally they are working on on on, on many aspects uh, some are working in the uh, with re uh, with respect to the disease model the cancer or many things are, are, are there and uh, then this uh, is mainly the toxicity screening and when the undesired side effect of the therapeutic treatment are being evaluated then you can use the target organ and the organ where side effects are expected like the kidney or the heart or the brain you can make a single organ and expose this compound you need a very 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 less quantity in micro editors you can expose the compound and then after maybe with the 3 hours exposure or you can keep it one hours is an acute for up to 24 hours you can wait. or you can keep uh, or uh, over 5 to 7 hours per day for 7 days like our acute toxic our sub acute how you used to do the sub acute toxicity like that here you can do both the acute and sub acute the acute toxicity is an exposure of a compound within a period of 24 hours single or multiple exposure of, of a compound within a uh, to, within 24 hours that is the acute toxicity as per uh, Uh, the guidelines available and here also you can use the same thing you create an organ then expose the compound say, a single application okay which can be passed in a one way only okay and then you can do the the its its toxicity the cell assays or other parameters and all and if you want to do sub acute also what you can do you can circulate the same compound the fluid which contains the cyanobiotics then you can uh, you can pass through in a circulatory way maybe for 2 uh, to 3 hours per day and like 7 days or even the 28 days uh, the, the the reports are available and then you can do the drug metabolism with multiple organs you can target the supporting the liver target organ which communicates in, in, in the same way and you can do the the pharmacokinetics also and um, what will be the effect after exposure in your compound with a single as well as multiple organs and mainly you know that when you do a toxicity and uh, there are several ways and when you are the intended application is the oral you can put it in the oral mucosa and if you want in the dermal and you can put it in the skin and if you want to the inhale you can put it in the in the lens tissue so like that you can in in a different way you can expose the compound which mimic the the, the regular exposure of uh, the other compounds adm is very important you know that uh, uh, once uh, a compound is enters into the body 
and it circulates and there will be an there will be an absorption and then it's distributed through the circulatory system and in, it reaches the blood there it metabolizes and some of the chemicals are uh, uh, the acid is non toxic but goes to the liver there it metabolizes and that metabolic product may be more toxic than the parent compound and then it actually it goes to the uh, the kidney where it excreted you know that uh, the metabolism is nothing but a compound which is more, uh, more water soluble the liver our liver is having a capacity to detoxify many of the things so it converts into a more water soluble compound and then excrete it out and if it completely excreted out it can very well say that it is non toxic but if it is a repeated toxicity there some case there will be accumulate fi if something is remaining there so those studies also you can very well conduct it with this type of uh, the multi organ or human on a chip and this is the trend nowadays in globally and you can do with uh, the cancer metastasis any disease modeling also you can do with uh, this organ on a chip but when you do an organ on a chip what you can do is in the, in a single plate you can make around uh, eight or nine or, or 10 uh, the the organs and all the organs are normal one in one of the thing you can expose the compound okay or you can keep a, a a cancer cell if it is a therapy you can in one of the will you can put a cancer cells and all others in the normal cells then you can directly apply your compound in a particular way you know that uh, you can uh, you can you can uh, you can make a path where a single application a single site you can do in a targeted thing you can do with the, the organ on a chip or in a multi organ on a chip so in that phase also you can or you can check the 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 carcinogenicity also you can do that while exposing the all the organ where it has in the multiple tendency yeah and this is about the, the multi organ on a chip now i am just talking about where we are now globally where we are now and this article uh, that was published in 2006 in altex okay you can see here this is the 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 road map or decision making you can see the this was initiated in 2005 for uh, much before 2005 the target was 2005 to 2010 to develop an innovative solution that is single and multi organ for medical product safety and where it is a single and multi organ was planned till 2015 and uh, then non initial of uh, the medical product safety that is industrial application and then 15 to 20 year, the human body on a chip that is human on a chip and then you can see the mode of action its assessment toxicity and you know that uh, then it goes to the the validated validated safety assays which is planned in the 2022 2030 and by middle of 2025 globally we are expecting that uh, a device a human on a chip with a multi organs okay which having which is intended for doing the systemic toxicity testing or disease modeling on chip for a clinical trials that is between 20 to 2030 but the i think globally the people are ready for 2025 human on a chip and that will be validated hazard identification and systemic efficacy as a by 2030 to 35 i don't know whether we can say that a total elimination of animals by the end of 2025 okay but we are expecting and it's not a total replacement but at least we can reduce a 75 percentage of animal usage and finally you know that if you are getting uh, around 10 or 10 chemicals or 100 chemicals out of 100 chemical everybody knows that uh, uh, how long will uh, uh, how many Years required for developing a drug. It takes around nine to twelve years for developing. And by this method, you can screen out many of the product within a short span of time and without killing animals. Once your chemical or the compound is okay, or it is, it has a good efficacy. It has a non-toxic and uh, uh, and 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 is uh, and then such chemical only you can do with the, the animal trials. So that will be a very good solace to the community and you know that uh, this is about uh, that uh, road map and this we all wanted to think about so our contribution on this uh, 
uh, uh, aspects or with this, uh, uh, what is that, um, the new area, the, the new generation technique is you can see here. You know, I got a project from the Department of Science and Technology three years back, that is for the development of human on a chip. Okay, and that was uh, in 2009 and immediately the COVID has come and uh, uh, no equipment and no cells, no recruitment, nothing was uh, there in 2020. But somehow we managed with, uh, uh, we got the one person uh, in the 2020 in the uh, nearby places. So we started the work with the human on a chip. And our aim was uh, uh, to development of a human on a chip for a toxicity as well as uh, the disease modeling. And you know that our, uh, our main aim is the fabrication of microfluidic chips and that we succeeded. The development of human on a chip, yes, at uh, 70 to 80 percent uh, we succeeded. Development of microculture on developed chip, yes. An assessment of repeated dose uh, toxicity using human on a chip that is uh, in, the, in, in the pipeline. And we got all the cell lines and everything recently because we need uh, the human cell lines. We got it from uh, uh, the ATCC. And then the assessment of pharmacokinetic and toxic kinetic using human on a chip. So my aim is to at least we have to contribute a little bit to the scientific community for the ADME, uh, the profiling and the system. And uh, you know that uh, the disease model or the human on a chip, it's a state of art uh, technology. And uh, this is uh, with the success of the organ on a uh, chip. This is a microphysiologic, uh, microphysiological uh, tissue culture system has simulated the researchers to challenge a more systemic level in vitro human biology through a human on a chip system. And this system aims to combine several organ equivalents within a human-like system which having a metabolic, a met, uh, metabolizing environment or aim at in vivo like pharmacokinetics pharma thing. And it is something like a simulating thing you can do with the, later you can do uh, with the, the in vivo uh, like uh, atmosphere. It's a micro environment, create a micro environment and expose the compound and to see its response. And you know that uh, the, uh, the, our main aim is uh, to extend the capacity and uh, uh, to, to, to do or to get uh, the ADME, that is absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion profile of uh, a compound while using the human on a chip or multiple organ on a uh, chip. And the ADME profile is crucial to analyze if a drug reaches its intended target and has a therapeutic effect or not. So the human on a chip, uh, uh, the concept of human on a chip has uh, have evolved over the past few years from a conceptual idea to a possible alternative for animal models. And the potential of the system is now universally recognized by scientists and other pharmaceutical industries and government authorities and many other regulatory agencies too. And you can see here how we do the fabrication of a device. This is a very complex procedure. You need uh, several equipments, uh, high-end equipments, which include the photolithography and all. And we uh, have all this uh, uh, equipment now. And you know that it has a pre-fabrication stage, a fabrication of device, and then post-fabrication. This I'm talking about only the fabrication of the device. And the later essay is that once you are familiar with these techniques, you will be very comfort in doing the experiment. And you know that initially you may think that this is difficult and this is very simple when you compare with an animal experiment. Them. And uh, there is no ethics and there is no, uh, what is that, the other uh, the issues related with, the, you don't go to the ethical committee for this type of things. So just I'm talking about uh, the fabricator. You know that when I'm talking, you may get little bit only. And if anybody is interested, we are very happy to demonstrate those things to the government uh, uh, the institute also and uh, because uh, uh, you know that this is the need of the hour and you can see here it is the prefabrication of devices uh, and you know that you have to make a pencil drawing now you sit together with uh, your uh, your people and what is the design you need it. and how many organs now how is the flow right and is it equally the 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 toxicant is equally reaching all the position or when it reaches where it goes to the first. So if it is the skin, it goes to the first. 
the liver or if it is in the oral you have to go to the neck so like that you have to plan so accordingly you have to make a pencil drawing first in your uh, maybe the lab book or anything and then you can design this chip by using a cad software and then you can do a multi physics software simulation studies also you can do how the flow is going where it reaches it and what is the velocity there and all you can get it from this uh, the simulation studies in the coming slide i can show you those things and once the the fabricated the free fabrication is over the design is ready simulations ready we we can able to see that this will function okay, or or this will works then it goes to the fabrication of device the fabrication of device is uh, you know that it is the mold fabrication and which contains uh, it has a, a protective layer and the photo resist then then the glass slides and the protective paper and everything then you can go to the uh, it, it has a rotation with uh, the 6 rpm and 100 degree centigrade by by the molding this uh, fabrication and where you have uh, the photo resist uh, lamination to the glass slides and then it goes to the photo resist laminated glasses it has uh, uh, we have a an ordeal film which you can get it outside and uh, this uh, you have to keep on the slides and then make uh, a, a photo mask aligned with a uv light exposure and uh, you can see this uh, your your drawing is clear here and then you have to have a pre uh, baking at uh, 150 degrees centigrade and with a uh, 5 minutes and then you can uh, and this rdl there is a developer like our the old uh, the photo developing system okay and then you have to with a uh, developer solution at one at 150 degree centigrade you can put it to 30 minutes and you can see the developing the mold the mold development and the hard baking you can get the uh, this type of thing and then you can do this uh, uh the the mask the photo mask you can keep it in the other pdm ms uh, or other uh, the material or the other uh, the material you can uh, we can take for uh, the fabrications and which have uh, again uh, the several process and we usually do with the pdm ms and over that uh, you can make the device finally you will get uh, a good uh, uh, the the uh, what is that uh, the pdm ms uh, organ on a chip with a good uh, what is that well and or multiple or or multi well plate you can get it like this okay here the design again this is a very simple design you can see okay and this is a slide you can see here with a with a diameter of 2.5 cm our uh, the pathological slides now the same slide only with 4.5 cm the length is 4.5 cm and width is 2.5 cm and it has a well like this and you know that the depth of the well is around 5 mm and uh, the length uh, it is around 2.5 mm so this is the plan you can see here okay this is the initial molding this is the well and by using this mask you can make a, a pdms flow like this you can see all the lines and these uh, lines are the diameter you can keep it it is equivalent to our uh, uh, our hair okay and you can keep to 100 uh, 10 to 1000 micron okay so this is the well and it has a bottom layer this is for the uh, the culturing the cells and over that you can keep it there and this is the flow the cells will grow here and this will keep it here and this is an inlet and then outlet okay and you need here it's only micro liter of the compound to get an idea about your about your okay so here you can see here oh, that video is not working so this is the way there is a video thing is there it is not coming okay so here you can see the organ around 10 organs are there and this is the way and uh, here is the the in and outer way so here you can see the the concentration and when start 
it says stimulation it is there but it's not working now i, I don't know how to do that it was working in the morning but i don't know now okay so the fluid will flow like this and it will come here so it reaches here and then it spread like this then it equally you can so it depends which organ you want okay this is the area of exposure then generally you can keep it liver here or if it is in the inhalation you can keep it the lungs also you can keep it for the way you are exposing like that and uh, the concentration if it, the red color reaches everywhere that is the maximum okay so like that it is not uh, running okay so this is the the prototype of the proposed device so this is the the uh, the software and uh, this is the microfluidic pump and this is the uh, the the solution where you have uh, your toxic and and all then it has go to like this like this and then this is a circulation thing okay this is a one way so this is circulating like this so you can do with the uh, one day few hours or multiple days with a few hours and you can keep in a in a in a clean room where we have incubator and uh, you can do everything here and if you want to take the the capacity or the the the, the potency the efficacy of your uh, the flow or the the liquid okay you can take uh, um, 20 microliter of uh, this uh, fluid then you can do all the all the all, all its uh, the, what is that is it the ph is okay all all other nutrients are there or not you can very well uh, do daily so like that you can the same same well or the same device you can keep it for seven days and to see the it's uh, repeated dose or in a single day you can expose it three to seven hours and to see its cellular growth and its other potency and all this is also the same like here also that uh, the simulation is there but it's not working uh, i don't know why right? so you can see here this flow the flow is running like this you can see the blue color okay once the blue color reaches every organ then it circulates okay and here you have to do that is the time is so it's going to come okay and then I, i can just run this is the cells and all and uh, here you can see that uh, we took this uh, the cells and do all the assays for uh, uh, doing this and uh, this is another device with a 10 organ this is a device with a, a bottom layer this is an upper layer and you know that there is micro pillars are there and uh, there is three layer one is the bottom layer with micro pillars over that there is uh, the semi permeable membrane and the above that it is a uh, flow and these two uh, the uh, the the uh, uh, things are uh, which you can directly expose the compound via that the openings so this is that uh, device this is latest device with ten organs and here you can see a top layer and the bottom layer and this is the uh, the vascularized there you know that at the at the bottom layer with an endothelial cells uh, and over that there is a semi permeable membrane then the 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 cells of your interest here and then over that uh, the flow will be there continuously with an inlet and outlet term. okay the, here also there was a oh, oh, is there but it's not uh, working and you know that this is a cross section and it has a uh, the pdms and this glass lights and all you can see here and uh, what i want to ultimately say is you know when you do a cytotoxicity with a human cells or animal cells what is ultimately is the human or animal cells direct exposure you will get a results and when you inject into the animals where you have an animal cells with a systemic response okay but you are extrapolating that result to the human but here you are using with a human cells with a circulatory system with a systemic response so this system is more reliable to or more uh, closer to the uh, the human on a thing human cells with a systemic response you will get a better results and the ultimate aim is to uh, to minimize the animal okay and these designs are uh, the we registered the designs and we patented all these designs and all and thank you so much and i think uh, one uh, three minutes i took extra i'm sorry for that and if there is any question i'm happy to answer sir you are under mute unmute sir so thank you so much for your very precise and wonderful presentation
you have made the uh, organ on chip as a topic very lucid and understandable to the audience and this uh, attendees uh, perhaps many of these attendees are, are listening to a talk of this kind for the first time organ on a chip otherwise it is, it is something a myth like uh, what uh, whether it exists at all but you have made it possible to as a, as a person who is who is uh, who has taken up a project on this executing a research on this topic you have made it really very uh, uh, understandable easy for the uh, for the viewers and the listeners to uh, to understand and carry home the message and motivate them get them motivated towards taking up projects of this kind and uh, it is uh, as you may be aware you you you, you came close to that point by 2025 we, we expect uh, animal experimentation to be uh, almost wrapped up and there will be like a non animal method a human on a chip coming up taking their place and you may be aware that nih and the enron epa have al almost declared that 2030 is that ultimatum for yes. animal experimentation yes. and uh, well should be prepared to uh, go into transition from animal experimentation to organ on chip model uh, so that whatever experiment you conduct your your conducting the experiment on the human rather than trying to do it in the animal model and extrapolate. You made that point, but I'm just making it a little more elaborate for the listeners to carry home the message. Thank you, Dr. Mohanan, for your Thank you, sir. Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. The, the organizers are grateful to you. The society, our society, is yeah. also grateful to you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. Yes, and now it is, uh, Dr. Patil has made this uh, with an announcement. He is coming uh, up. Please listen. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Uh, bye, bye. With this uh, lecture, we have come to the end of first slot of sessions. I am thankful to all the speakers, Dr. A.B. Pant, Dr. Frankwise Puskate, Dr. Adrian Smith, and Dr. P.V. Mohanan. After this slot, we are going to have a short tea break of 20 minutes. We will be joining on the same link again at 7 p.m. sharp. And the next talk will be by Dr. Thomas, uh, Thomas Harter. Okay. I invite you for uh, that talk after that gap of 20 minutes. Please be with us. Please join again. And I'm uh, ending this session. And I'm also ending YouTube streaming of this session at present. We'll be joining shortly after 20 minutes. And we'll be continuing the next session now. Dr. Akbar Shah? Yeah. Yeah, is it OK? Yeah, yeah that is OK. Yeah, that, that's the schedule. Right. We'll go through the schedule. Yeah, I'm closing the session now. Yeah, and we'll be meeting after 20 minutes. Yeah. Please Thomas is already.